namaste. <laughs> wow, what a last few intense days we've had, isn't it? Sometimes life gets so intense that there's no time to talk about it or make videos about it. The only thing you can do is meet it head on and live it. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing. <laughs> And I assume everybody else is going through something similar because we have all five major planets retrograde. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. What does that mean? It means all the big life issues, the <clears throat> karma that that planet represents in your life is going to come up for review. <laughs> What about our last uh, five-year plan? How did that work out? <laughs> and what's the status? And what are we going to do about it? So my five-year plan <laughs> was to master Advaita traditions uh, because then I would have a complete tool set for talking about enlightenment to just about anybody, whether Buddhist or Hindu or uh, Chinese or Tibetan or American, heaven forbid. No, uh, a lot of people have attained enlightenment spontaneously during LSD trips back in the 60s and stuff like this. They're out there. But I don't know, I'm not sure how to talk their language. So what I've done is learned the traditional languages, the Native American, the North Indian devotional language, the South Indian Advaita, the Sri Lankan Buddhist, the Chinese Qigong, and the uh, uh, Kadoshka Native American. So what I wanna do now is to take a little distance and go back. Uh, do you like our new intro? Do you like our logo, Secret Heaven logo? Give me some feedback in the comments. This is going to be the standard, the, the title, the logo, the heading for all our subsequent work. And um, you know, I've done quite a bit of experimentation here with different logos and different approaches and different stuff. And I finally think I've got an idea of who our core audience is and the kind of things that they need, the kind of things they're looking for. I mean, what would you do if you had attained enlightenment spontaneously back in the 60s and nobody around you understood what the heck was going on with you? Huh? What would you do? I mean, my response to being in that situation was to go learn a bunch of spiritual traditions and to reach the conclusion after much toil and effort that they all teach the same thing in different words. And that's really the only difference between them is the terminology. Actually, they're talking about a very similar experience and that experience has four layers, like a stack of pancakes. <laughs> We've talked about that. Dvaita Vada, Vishishta Dvaita Vada, Vivarta Vada, and Ajatta Vada. And those four levels of realization are seen in every bona fide, living, complete tradition. Now, there are also traditions that are not no longer living, that is, they no longer have an enlightened master uh, at the head or a, a, a working succession process or anything like that. Um, this is almost all of them nowadays, unfortunately. And what they tend to do is concentrate on one or another of these four levels and present it as if it's the all in all, as if it's the only thing that matters. But what that does is simply limits their audience to people who need that level of teaching, that style of teaching or practice. And all the other people are gonna say, no, that's not for me, see. 
So when somebody does that, I always wonder, like, why are they being so sectarian? It's like they're shooting themselves in the foot, you know? They're alienating most of their audience. So in my case, what it was, was that I was trying to teach on a very high level for people of a similar advancement and similar intelligence to myself. And there just aren't many of those. <laughs> so I finally realized what I need to do is to also teach the foundation. The um, energy structure that I built when I was young that was able to support the demands of the self-realization process. How did I do that? Well, that's what Secret Heaven is about, and especially Secret Heaven Qigong. Uh, that encompasses the first three chakras. The sex chakra, the energy chakra, and the movement chakra. And we're using the Chinese chakra system because it makes more sense to me. I like it. Uh, I think the Indian chakra system probably started out the same, but because of doctrinal or philosophical reasons, the sex chakra and the, the first chakra and the sex chakra got split into two for philosophical reasons. But actually, they should be one. And the energy storage chakra, the Dan Tian, got omitted completely from the Indian system. So like, where's the battery? <laughs> No wonder this doesn't work. It needs a battery. <laughs> and this is exactly why most people can't attain a realization or enlightenment by the Indian system. Because they don't have the battery. They don't have the energy necessary to pierce through all that maya and actually uh, get to the fundamental thing, the basic thing, which is unconditioned objectless awareness. Okay, we've talked about all that in tremendous detail in previous series. So what this series is going to focus on is getting the physical energy plant in top condition. Okay, getting enough energy so that you can meditate for 8, 10, 12, 15, 16 hours a day, if that's what you need to do. So... <laughs> This involves Tantra, because the sex chakra is the regulator of the energy system. And if the regulator is turned down, the whole system is turned down. It's like a thermostat. Huh? You turn down the temperature on, on the thermostat, the whole building gets cooler. See? So in the same way, if you turn down the sex chakra, the whole body, the, all the other centers calm down. Right? They go into lower energy states. And uh, shortly I'm going to do a video totally on these seven energy states and what it means for each chakra. But just for now, know that there is such thing. Huh? There's seven chakras with seven functions. And each chakra can have seven energy states. And the highest one is ecstatic enlightenment. And the hint comes from the sex chakra. Huh? Has anybody here had sex? <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Why is it so good? Well, it's like sleep. What? <laughs> sex and sleep? Well, they are related. What's related about them is that in deep sleep, one goes into the uh, union with Brahman. This is enlightenment. And at the peak of orgasm, also, one goes into union with Brahman. Ecstatic, all-knowing, <laughs> fullness of being is so wonderful. See, And then also after, after a really intense orgasm, huh, a, a five or six <laughs> or a seven on the Richter scale, <laughs> you go into what's called a valley orgasm. The, <clears throat> the sexual orgasm is the peak, and then afterward comes the valley. 
This is a deep relaxation, which is indistinguishable from deep sleep. So this is a yogic state. When it's entered consciously, even when it's entered accidentally, it's still, you look back at it like, wow, that was great, man. How can I do that again? Isn't it? And everybody needs their, their beauty sleep at night or they're just not worth being around the next morning. <laughs> I know I like that. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> but once you get that sleep, it's like your battery's charged for the day. Isn't it? So you can also reach this recharging state uh, where one, the, the uh, jivatma and the paramatma are connected. This is called yoga. Huh? I need a recharge. Let me do my yoga. And so there's all different kinds of yogas for each center, for each chakra. And guess what? They can be practiced simultaneously. It's not that you have to be a specialist in one or the other. It's not that you have to attain enlightenment by one chakra's methods or another chakra's methods. No. It's the synergy, the connection between the different chakras that has to be opened wide. Huh? And then guess what happens? The kundalini will rise all by herself. She wants to rise. She wants to give you enlightenment. That kiss right in the middle of, between the two eyes. Huh? She wants to give you that blessing. She loves it. Huh? So she has given so many scriptures and so many gods and so many temples and everything to help us attain it. But what do we do? Oh, we make it into a religion and ruin the whole thing by prohibiting sex. Well, what I think is that this has to be reversed and all these different different yogas have to be brought back together in the context of the whole human being all seven chakras and to develop all seven chakras to the point <clears throat> where they can support each other on the higher energy levels and then you literally never have to come down huh? now i'm not talking about being manic running around like a crazy person you know when I do these videos, I'm pretty concentrated, you know. But I'm not like this all the time, right? I'm very relaxed right now, actually, because I've been practicing a lot the last few days. <laughs> Part of what the uh, extremes of life have brought, the five retrograde planets have brought. But I've also been looking deeply into the synergy of things and how they all connect and how I could structure this teaching to solve not only the problems of a person like myself, who is very, very experienced uh, on the path, but also for new people, and to bring new energy and, and new uh, consciousness into the old ways by opening them up to people today. And what's the single biggest obstacle to people getting on the real path, sex. All the old traditions basically try to make believe it doesn't exist, <laughs> but it does. Now, the tradition that we follow, the Chinese Qigong yoga system, was introduced into China by an Indian monk, Da Mo, or Bodhidharma. He had been uh, living in India and became, I think, the 13th lineage holder of the Mahayana uh, lineage. See, the, the Buddhism fragmented into a bunch of different sects. And uh, the Mahayana was one of them and uh, several others, right? Most of which have died out. Pretty much now all you have is the Theravada and Mahayana. But the Chinese is kind of a weird flavor because they actually preserved all the original sutras. They didn't edit like both the Mahayana and the uh, Theravada did. 
The Chinese preserved all the sutras. So now those archives are being translated, and it's very interesting, some of the stuff that's coming out. So basically, this Indian monk came from over the Himalayas huh, and came to China and wound up at this unknown little monastery called Shaolin. Of course, Shaolin is now famous. Why? Because Da Mo introduced Iron Shirt Qigong. So we're going to practice Iron Shirt Qigong. And if anybody says, well, these methods are not known in India, right, because they died out. They died out because they were passed down by the, uh, the kings, the Kshatriya class, the martial lineages. And of course, when India was invaded and turned into a democracy and all that, they got rid of the kings and their culture. So yes, <laughs> this uh, art used to exist in India, but now it's no more. And it has to be re-imported from China, where it is still kept alive by the martial traditions. Well, I don't know about after the Cultural Revolution, but those who, teachers who escaped the Cultural Revolution taught me and others uh, these internal arts. So we're going to make extensive use of those teachings and hook them back up with the rest of the yoga system uh, and so that it makes a coherent whole. Because once you have developed the sex habit, uh, the cat is out of the bag. Uh, it can't be put back in again. <laughs> once somebody has developed sex habit, you cannot artificially make them celibate. They'll become neurotic. They'll lose energy. They have to turn down the sex center. Now, if a child is raised according to traditional methods and brahmacharya, this won't happen. It's only when someone has become sexually active and then tries to stop it. That's what's causing all the damage. That's why people aren't able to attain. Huh? They're becoming neurotic. They're becoming uh, suppressed, repressed low energy. So we want to reverse this whole trend. We want to show that the first step on the spiritual path is sex uh, mastery. Uh, that one should totally master the sex function on all seven levels of energy. And then everything else goes like a breeze. Trust me. I mean, really, once you have this view, once you have this understanding, once you do this practice, once you open up that sex chakra, you're never going to want to close it up again. Because it's so pleasurable and so wonderful and so health-giving and so healing and all this good stuff. What can I say? So the next video we're going to talk about the seven levels of energy in each chakra and what their symptoms are and how they work together to help us attain the highest uh, self-realization. Aum Tatsa. Buddha Saranai.